Hey guys, another episode of JDC Auto here. Today we got a 2013 Audi A4 uh, 2.0 Turbo. We're going to be doing disc brakes today. Pretty simple job. Um, so to get started on this, we're going to start on the... I've decided to jack up. We're going to start on the driver's side. Doesn't matter what side you start on. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the wheel off here. I've got the jack underneath it. We're looking good here. There's a little hole in the middle here. I got a little pick. I'm going to put that in there. Pop that off. Now once that's off, you're going to need a 17 millimeter. I'm using a Dewalt Impact. It's one of my favorite impacts in the world. It saved my life and my my muscles and my uh, basically everything. So we're gonna go and take this off. And I always take it off in a star pattern because you want to evenly release the pressure from the wheel. All right. Set your lug nuts to the side here. here we go. It's 100 degrees today, feels good. The wheel off, we're gonna roll it away. Now, brakes and rotors on the car, we're actually gonna do uh, a full change of the brakes. Especially on these European cars, you wanna change both the rotors when you change the brakes, just because it's such a pain in the butt and uh, you don't wanna deal with it in the future here. So, um, looks like we got ourselves a clip here in the front, we have a couple bolts in the back. Uh, let me grab the right tools and we'll be right back. All right, guys, let's take a look at some of the tools you're going to need here. Um, I got a little mini impact with 13 millimeters. This is for the back to release the caliper uh, from the main caliper housing. Uh, I got a pry bar to take out this front clip here. And um, there's a little Torx head you're going to need here. This is a T30 Torx head. Um, what else did I bring here? I brought also for the back, it's a 21 millimeter. It's the main housing bolts here. And I have a little pick to help me get rid of some of the connectors. Uh, there's one connector for the wear sensor. And um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and start taking this apart. So first thing you're going to do... There we go. Apologize for that. Watch out for that clip. It will shoot off here. Um, all you need to do is basically get this little nipple out of there. Set that clip to the side here. Now we're going to go to the back. 13 millimeters on a little socket here. We're going to go ahead and... Take out the, the upper and lower bolt here. These two bolts are what hold on the caliper housing. So now that these two bolts are out. All right, guys, so now we have the two 13 millimeter bolts out. Um, before we're gonna take off this uh, caliper, uh, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the electrical sensor here. There's a little one. Uh, this sensor is for the wear sensor, for the, uh, for, the, for the brake pads. I don't know if you can see that. Can you get a close up on that? Can you see it? So this sensor right here, can you see it pretty clear? Okay, so what you're gonna do is you take your pick, kind of push it from the back. Oh, sorry, I'm a hard time. I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera. So you push it from the back to kind of give it a little bit of leeway. And then you push to the side, you twist it clockwise, and then the clip should slide out like that, out of the housing. Now. There is a normal little clip button here on the back. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little clip here. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna squeeze that little clip and pull the connector out, just like so, and it comes right out. All right, so now that that's loose, on the back of the housing here is a little uh, little rubber kind of holder that kind of holds it on. I just like to take this all the way out just so I can pull it all the way through. And this is your electrical sensor. Get yourself a bungee cord or something that you can kind of hang up here because you don't want this caliper to hang on its own uh, brake line here it's just bad for the brakes so I'm gonna tie this up here and now with this we should be able to slide it off again you can wiggle it back and forth with the two 13 millimeter bolts out this should come right off yep and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the brake pad this one kind of clips in kind of just pop it out you see there's a little prong clip here with the wear sensor on it I'm gonna go ahead and pull the wear sensor through. It wasn't stuck to my fingers, there we go. Pull the wear sensor through, got it? So that's one brake pad with the wear sensor. And then we have the second one here. I'm just gonna press this off. This one's on there pretty snug. I think someone put an adhesive of some type. There's supposed to be a little bit of grease back here. What we're gonna do, is gonna take our pry bar or a screwdriver And, uh, or that, or I'm going to get a little punch and just tap, tap it out because it seems to be pretty stuck on there. So I'm going to grab a punch and a hammer. All right, so I got myself just a little punch that'll fit in this hole. 
There's a little circular piece that's in the back of the brake pad that just basically locks into this so the brake pads don't slide. And all I'm going to do is just give us a little tap. There we go. All right, a couple little taps, punches it out, and as you can see, just kind of the grease got kind of stuck on there, but there's a little piece that goes in there. All right, so now we have both of our brake pads out. This is the outside, and this is the side towards the piston. And you can see there, uh, they're getting down pretty low here. And actually started to get into the wear sensor a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but it started to get to the wear sensor, which should have triggered uh, for the inside of the car. But as you can see, this piece just kind of slides in there. And go ahead and set these to the side. So we have our clip, we have our wear sensor, we have our bra old brake pads, which we're going to set to the side. Um, and a part of this job as well, we're going to take off and replace the rotors as well, because when you do on these European cars, you have to do the rotors. Because it's just a, it's a headache down the line, and you really don't want to deal with that. So, um, for the rotor, for I mean for the caliper, for now we're going to go ahead and just get some of our uh, bungee hooks here, kind of hook it up, set it to the side for now, and now we have a little bit of space for our to get our rotor off. But before we do that, we need to get off this bracket. The bracket's using 21 millimeter socket. I have an impact deep well, and there's two of them on the back side of here. Actually, I think there might be three. Let me check. Looks like it's just two, which should be fine. So, honestly, a big wrench will do. Um, I'm honestly glad that I have my impact here. This thing has helped me out so much. Um, just an, a little tip as well. If you notice the wheel, I turned the wheel to the right to give me more access to the back here. So, when the car is in there, just start it, turn the wheel to the right. It gives you a little bit more access um, to getting to the back of this. So, pro tip. There's one. There's one in the bottom, and there should be one in the top here. Yep, and there it goes. And don't worry about it too much. It's a piece of tough steel. It's just solid. Obviously, don't let it bang around too much, but I'm also going to clean this up while I'm here with some brake clean, and uh, we're going to move on. So there's the caliper housing. Get the caliper housing off. And now that the caliper housing is off, the rotor should come off. However, the Germans, they added a Torx T30. So get your Torx T30 in there, and then all you need to do is break it loose, and then from there, you can just hand loosen it. It's really not in there that tight. Now, depending where you are, if it's an East Coast car, we're in the West Coast, so we have a little bit drier weather. We don't have snow and salt, so we don't get a lot of rust out here. And so make sure you don't lose that screw. Set it to the side somewhere convenient, and this should come off, but if it's, as you can see, it's kind of jammed, take yourself a little hammer here. like chunks of rust and debris are coming out okay. I need to get my bigger hammer right. I'm gonna get my bigger hammer Okay, so, right, so take a couple hammers. I got a dead blow hammer. I got a big sledgehammer, eight pound. Uh, again, just tap around it. Again, these will leave little nicks in here. You can kind of aim for, if you want to be safe, um, I'm very confident to get this off, but if you want to be safe, don't hit along the rotor. Hit along the housing here, the little flat spot, because just in case you can't get it off, you can still reuse this rotor until you can get it to somewhere that you can get it off. So um, hit around here. Don't hit it on the rotor like I did, but I just wanted to get this bastard off. So now that it's off, as you can see, there's minimal rust, but just years of being on there, heating, cooling, kind of caused it to pinch on there. So I'm going to set this to the side, hold the rotor, and um, I brought myself a little pan here. This pan is just so that I can use my brake cleaner just to kind of clean up everything because when you do a brake job, you're not just coming in, swapping in and out really quick and getting out. You want to you know, take care, make sure you get the job clean and done. Just like so. It's looking a little better. And if you really want to do an amazing job on your car, um, get a little wire wire brush and scrub, just like little areas here. But um, this is pretty clean. It's just dirty, unfortunately, and I'm not going to uh, take the time to really, like, detail the car because that's not what we're here to do. We're here to just replace the parts. So, 
All right, next thing, let's go ahead and put on our new rotor, uh, which we got here. All right, guys, so right here we have our brand new brakes and our brand new rotor right next to each other. Uh, let's go ahead and show you the showcase the brakes just to give you guys an idea of uh, how, uh, how thin these have gotten and definitely down to the wear sensor, but these are like three, four times as thick. Now, the original ones on the car are a semi-metallic metallic. metallic. Um, I got ceramic brakes. I love ceramic brakes. I think they last longer. I think they're quieter, and I think they stop better. So got new ceramics on here. Um, on the back of here, we have some 3M, uh, looks like, some coating. We're going to put some grease on this. Uh, the kit that I got didn't come with grease, but I have some grease. And uh, that's going to keep it from sticking too much. Now, let's talk about the new rotor here. Now, new rotor, looking good. Uh, we have it here. Now, a lot of times these come from the factory with a bunch of wax on them or some type of uh, solution to protect it from eroding. So make sure you take some brake clean and always spray your new rotors. Always, always, front and back. Make sure you spray both front and back of those. Now I have a rag here. Uh, ready? All right, guys, again, like I said, don't, don't forget to spray your rotors. You take a little rag, something, just give them a good wipe. Not just the, the front, but also make sure you hit the back because it does work on both sides. Again, get that wax off, that little coating they have on there. And then after you get that there, what you can do now is you can actually put your new rotor on. And again, the first thing you want to look for is that little hole there. Match it up to a little hole where that Torx head goes. Get that right up there. And I like to put that Torx head in to kind of hold it on. So again, get that finger, finger tightened on there. Let's get it started. Okay. And once it's started, go ahead and take your ratchet and uh, snug it up to hold it on. And again, I'm going to be spraying this again because my hands are touching it and just all types of grease and stuff on my hands that you don't want to have on your rotors. You want this to be clean as possible so that you can stop. You don't have to be crazy tight, just snug it up there so it holds it on. Now that that's on, we can put back on the bracket, the caliper housing bracket, but before that, as you can see, it's pretty dirty. I'm just gonna give it a quick spray to clean it up. Again, so let's use some brake clean, simple. Again, hit both sides there. All right, shake it off, give it a quick wipe. Again, it's gonna get a lot of brake dust on your rags, so don't worry about it. There we go. So it's mostly clean. Eliminate the amount of brake dust you're getting on your, your car. And then what you can do now is go ahead and let's get this bracket back on with your 21 millimeter bolts. Again, this just slides on there. Line up the holes in the back. And then all you gotta do is get it started. Get one started, grab the other one, start the bottom one. go and again um, these I believe these do have a torque spec I'm gonna check what torque spec these are but I'm just gonna snug them up with the impact right now again nothing crazy just get them all right those are nice and snug on there I'm gonna figure out what the torque spec is and I'm gonna get these torqued down um, before that though I'm gonna go ahead and decompress the caliper because the new brakes are um, a lot thicker, as you know. And what we need to do is we need to decompress the caliper piston here. Uh, so what, we're, what I'm gonna do, what I like to do is go up top here, go to where the power steering, sorry, sorry, the brake, the brake fluid, and we're just gonna open this cap here. Just gonna twist this, and I just like this to be open. Doesn't have to be anything crazy, just kinda set that out, let that be open. And you can go down and rent it from it. All right, guys, at this moment, I realized that the way the calipers were designed, my tool here um, was not able to effectively work on decompressing this caliper. Um, so it's showing me doing it, but I'm doing a voiceover right now just to kind of explain what I did do. It's very simple. If you have any type of, um, any type of uh, C-clamp or something that you can kind of reach in there and decompress it, I have little like uh, grip, grip grabs which you can kind of use your hand to squeeze and decompress it. But the whole goal is for you guys to get to 
the point where you can decompress the the piston you can go to AutoZone and, and maybe find a, the right tool for this year but if you watch uh, I try to put in my tool and I realize at this point like oh shoot there's no uh, gap for the little area to fit through so I end up just using some uh, something similar to what I would say is a C-clamp to kind of decompress it with a plate and uh, I was able to decompress the uh, the piston rest uh, we took out the little caliper housing bolts that kind of have a little bit of play in them. I've already put this one in, but I'm going to show you guys how to take it out, pull it in. I think I've already shot a video about it, but um, you pull it out, <coughs> it's that pin, and how we're going to put it back in. Most importantly is how we're going to put these back in. First thing you're going to do is you're going to get your, um, you're going to get your, oh, sorry, it's underneath my leg. So you're going to get your another one here, take some grease. I'm putting some inside of it, just on the inside lips of it and then also onto the little bolt here now the order that I found that's best to really get this in there nice and easy after I grease it I'm gonna take on uh, wipe off my hands here first thing you're gonna put in is the, uh, the little rubber housing the little rubber housing you're gonna put in first kind of give it a, a light fold in the front there kind of get it through can you see that so you're going to push it through. It's so slippery. I don't want to go anywhere. There it goes. All right, now you got it in there. So once you go ahead and push it in, don't be uh, don't be afraid to give it a little bit of power just because it's not really, uh, it doesn't, it's not going to break that easy. And then you're going to go ahead and get one side started. It doesn't matter if you do from the front or the back. What you're going to do is just going to get it started in one of the holes here. Sorry, it's just slippery. And once you get it started, there we go. See, now we're in there. Just push it through. Just find the center. Don't worry about it. Just push it through. Push it all the way through to the other side and let it push it out till it catches in the groove. Can you see the back there? See how the metal's protruding? Now it's caught in the groove. It'll automatically stay in that groove now. Now all you got to do is kind of flex the front here and then kind of give it a little bit of a, a, a play through. But now, caught in the groove in the front, caught in the groove in the back, and the system's sealed. Now you have a new greased caliper bolt rubber housings there. So, And these need to be greased well so that there's even wear. So that there's even wear on the um, on the brake pads. Now we have our new caliper bolt uh, housings in with the new grease so that they can flex and move freely. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our new, our new brake pads. The one with the little piece here goes inside Make sure you match the curve of the brake pad to go inside of here and just press it in. Pretty simple. Now that that's on, go ahead and put it on the other side. Again, this hole will fit inside of, it'll kind of clip right in and now those are in. Before we go any further, now we need to install the new brake wear sensor. Your kit should have one. Um, if your kit doesn't have one, it's okay as long as this plastic here isn't worn down to the metal. Once the metal meets the metal contact, it triggers the light inside the car letting you know that you need to change your wear sensor. So it's not good if it's triggered, but this one is still in a good condition. Sorry, this is a new one, but if you're not, you can make sure it's still in a good condition. So, so we're gonna go ahead, all you gotta do is flip it over once you get the brake pads in, which this one may not stay because of a clip, so we'll take it out temporarily. And what we're gonna do, is go over here, and if you look on top of the caliper here, there's a little slot for this wear sensor. And all you're gonna do is make sure that it's facing towards the side of the brake. So, this part should snap right in there. Pops right in like so. There's a little wire holder here. Make sure you tuck the wire underneath that. And then there you go. Your wear sensor's on. And you have your new front side brake pad. And we're gonna put on the back side of the brake pad. All right, now that these are on there, go ahead and line up the, uh, line up the brake pads and the caliper and put it back on Tip. and then these there's little hooks on the brake pads that should help you to uh, get that in there now be aware of the little metal plates the little caliper housing bolts the ones you just replaced sometimes they stick out and don't allow you to uh, push it in so now that they're see this bottom one's not fully in so anyways finagle it wiggle it and get these um, in all the way all right now that we have the caliper back on, we got them aligned in the back. We're going to go ahead and get these bolts started, the 13 millimeter bolts. Okay. 
might have to play with it a little bit to kind of figure out. There we go. All right, so both of those are started in the back now. Again, I'm, I'm not. I'm gonna just snug these up. These do not need to be crazy tight. I'm gonna figure out the torque spec for those as well. So now we have our cable in the back here. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the cable here. There's a little, uh, a little rubber housing that this this uh, cable has on it that kind of covers the top of the uh, the, the bleed screw. And all you got to do is just make sure that that piece is over it. And that what that does is just the bleed screw cover holds the, the cable. And then we're going to go ahead and slide this cable back in. I'm going to get it connected first. So reconnect the brake wear sensor cable. Clip the brake wear sensor cable in the back there. I don't know if you can see that. But it's uh, pretty simple. And then this goes in sideways and then kind of twist counterclockwise and there's a little tab on the nipple there that will uh, that'll lock it into place. So now that the brake wear sensor's on, we have our calipers on, we have our new brakes on, greased on the back by the way, I greased the back of them. And um, everything is on that way in a sense. All right, so last part of it as well is don't forget to put that clip back on here. Now my kit came with a brand new clip. It doesn't take much force. Just make sure it's resting on the two caliper housing bracket. And then all you do is you put them on there and then take your fingers and just give it a Give it a good squeeze and kind of slide it. Slide it, line it up, slide it into the hole. There we go. And there you go. All right, so now we have our clip on. Um, last step was to torque everything down. The big caliper housing bolts, the ones that go to the wheel bearing, uh, not the small ones that run through that little black uh, squishy piece we just put in. Um, those ones are torqued to roughly around 196 Newton meters, which translates to about 150 foot pounds. So I torqued them to 150 foot pounds. And then the, the bolts in the back, the small ones, are torqued to 30 Newton meters, which is about 25 to 30 foot pounds. So uh, make sure you torque those down. Those are good to a good spec and you'll be good to go. Um, last thing was to put the clip on, and the very last part is your brake job is done. All you need to do now is spray some brake clean and wipe off all of your. your uh, Wipe off all of your grease and hand marks and everything and make sure you're good to go. And that's how you change the brakes on a 2013 Audi A4. Effectively, step by step, simple, to the point. Hopefully this helped you out. Be sure to follow, share, subscribe. You know the good stuff. We got more coming for you.